Hey everybody, Sam Pedro here. Back today with another review, kind of a different uh, review for me. But today I'm gonna to be showing you this Atlas, which I recently purchased. And so this is the Oxford Atlas of the world. And I'm really excited about it. I, I've really liked it so far. And so just wanna quickly kind of show you uh, the Atlas, show you some of the, the maps and the images inside and kind of tell you why I purchased this one. So I've been wanting an atlas for the longest time. I, I like geography, I like maps, I like looking at maps. So I always wanted a nice atlas. And from my research, the kind of general consensus out there is that there are three kind of main atlases. So we have the Oxford Atlas, we have the Times Comprehensive Atlas, and then we have the National Geographic Atlas. But the reason I purchased the Oxford Atlas of the world is because this is the only atlas that is updated annually. So this is the 26th edition. The, the 27th edition actually comes out in probably like a month or so, uh, but this came out last year in 2019. And it's a really big book. This book weighs eight pounds, just about. And from top to bottom, it's uh, 15 inches long. And then across it's 11 and a half inches. So I wanna show you uh, show you around the atlas and so inside the first part of the book is Kind of like an essay on like the state of the world. I, and I'll be honest. I didn't read it I didn't really read any of the, the essays and write-ups in here uh, Wasn't my main purpose for purchasing this book uh, But then we start off right away with satellite images and these are just beautiful images of select cities uh, I can't remember how many there are there's probably 15 or so and so we have Vienna, Austria, we have Iran, and uh, uh, in the, from the United States, we have Niagara Falls right here, and then Oklahoma City and Philadelphia. And yeah, I just really liked these images. These are high definition and uh, really interesting and fun to look at. So after this section, we have the, the Gazetteer of Nations, and it's just an alphabetical list of all the countries of the world. A uh, quick snippet about the political and ec economic uh, landscape of that of that country. Then we have the kind of more of the geography section. And so this part, it breaks the world down into different maps by looking at it through different lenses, such as demographic, climate, uh, economic, uh, all that good stuff, population density. And again, I didn't really read through this that much. Uh, I have glanced at a few of these. Um, but yeah, I haven't read through most of it. Uh, and then the main part of the, the book, the reason why you'd buy an atlas is for the maps and how it's broken up is broken up by continents. And so for example, here's Europe and overview of Europe. And then it kind of goes country by country. Uh, not quite every country has its own page and most the bigger and larger countries actually have multiple pages. So for example, uh, the British Isles, here we have an overview, which is pretty detailed. And then on the next page, we also have Ireland and Scotland. And, uh, and then just an overview of England and Wales. And yeah, so there's hundreds of pages of these, these maps. I really like them. They're highly detailed. I've had a lot of fun looking through it. And overall, I've been really satisfied with uh, the Oxford Atlas of the world. And yeah, anyways, today I just wanted to quickly show you my this atlas I purchased. Uh, if, if you're thinking of an atlas, I think this is a, or if you're thinking of getting an atlas, I think this is a really good one to start off with. High quality, not super expensive, and it's updated every year. And so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this quick video, and I will see you guys in the next video.